Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful it's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another day Every day I open my eyes I see morning light, morning light I know that the Lord just brought me through the night Through the night So I face a challenging day Before he take me away behind to the grind Success on me This wonderful morning It's another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say thank you Lord For another
lovely one there entitled May the Mind of Christ My Savior. Someone sent me a text message saying there was no song. I am not sure what took place. All I could tell you is that everything shows up as normal on my screen. That is a bit interesting indeed. I am hoping you can hear me now and that you were able to hear that particular hymn just then. My goodness. Now we'll continue then. I'll try to get the words here up on screen and hopefully we won't have any, <clears throat> pardon me, and hopefully we won't have any more glitches for this morning. Listen, the devil is a liar, let me tell you. All is going to be well in three, two, and one. There we go. Mm -hmm. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Words from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 1. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 through, and 1 through to 8. It can be found on page 36. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. <clears throat> his hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or that might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm number 88, and using a previously recorded version of the psalm, we have Miss Erin Peters reading for us. I chose to use this previous recording of Miss Erin because she was not feeling too well yesterday and couldn't go to school, and I thought that this this morning might cheer her up. So let's listen to Miss Erin leading us in Psalm 88. Good morning. The psalm for today is Psalm 88, 1 to 19. O oh Lord, my God, my Savior, by day and night I cry to you. Let my prayer enter into your presence. Incline your ear to my lamentation. 
for I am full of trouble. My life is at the brink of the grave. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I have become like one who has no strength. Lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me into the depths of the pit, in dark places and in the abyss. Your anger weighs upon me heavily, and all, and all your great waves overwhelm me. You have put my friends far from me. You have made me to be abho abhorred by them. I am in prison and cannot get free. My sight has failed me because of trouble. Lord, I have called upon you daily. I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will those who have died stand up and give you thanks? Will your loving kindness be declared in the grave? Your faithfulness in the land of destruction. Will your wonders be known to the dark? Or your righteousness in the country where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Lord, why have you rejected me? Why have you hidden your face from me? Ever since my youth, I have been wretched and at the point of death. I have borne your terrors with a troubled mind. Your blazing anger has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. My friend, they surrounded me all day long like a flood. They encompass me on every side. My friend and my neighbor, you have put far from me, far away, you have put away from me. And darkness is my, is my only companion. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Miss Erin, we want to thank you for allowing us to use that previously recorded version of the psalm. And we pray that by God's grace, you will be up and running and feeling like your regular self very, very quickly. We continue then with our second canticle for this morning. This one is the Song of the Redeemed based on Revelation chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our Bible lesson, and we continue with our look at Joel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 28, and concluding at chapter 3, verse 8. Let's have a listen. A reading of the Word of God, written in the book of Joel, chapter 2, reading from verse 28 to chapter 3, 
verse 8. Then, afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves, in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portent in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape as to the Lord has said. And among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. For then, in those days, and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there, on account of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations. They have divided my land and cast lots for my people, and traded boys for prostitution, and sold girls for wine, and drunk it down. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistia? Are you paying me back for something? If you are paying me back, I will turn your deeds back upon your own heads swiftly and speedily. For you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried my rich treasures into your temples. You have sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks, removing them far from their own borders. But now I will rouse them to leave the place to which you have sold them. And I will turn your deeds back upon your own heads. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the people of Judah. And they will sell them to the Sabaeans, to the nation far away. For the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you allow me to get back to the beginning of the reading here quickly, I find that this portion when I was preparing yesterday evening for tonight was an interesting portion of reading. It is a portion of reading that is geared towards those who would have taken Israel into captivity. Now, okay, let's see why this is not coming up on screen here when I click this thing. Now, it's I find it interesting because what happens is that the Lord, there it is, the Lord, of course, was punishing the nation of Israel, right? And in punishing the nation of Israel, he allowed them to fall into the hands of their enemies. Seems normal, yes? You do bad things, you don't follow my precepts, I will step back from you and come to you whatever will, yes? Whatever may come, that is what you're going to have to deal with. And that seems fair. I remove my hand of protection from over you and whoever should come should come. But then when they repent now, the Lord is now going to go back now and he is going to deal with those persons who would have assaulted Israel when his hand was moved away. So it's like, okay, let's pretend because this is purely pretend because there's no truth in it. Let's pretend I'm my parents' favorite child. This is just pretend, okay? Let's pretend I'm my parents' favorite child. And so nobody in the house can touch me or correct me or tell me anything if it is not my parents. Yes? But let's say I do something that upsets my mother and my father and they decide, okay, you are on punishment, no holds bar, we don't want to hear it. More than likely, 
the people who would not have been able to chastise, correct, or do me anything because I am apparently their favorite, then have an opportunity to, if I slip up, get their or exact their punishment upon me. Yes? And so in this period of time that my parents have left it open that they will not defend me from all sides, I do something to, let's say, another sibling, and that sibling give me a good clouting. Hmm? Okay? Seems fair. I do something wrong, the sibling clouts me. But then I run and I tell my parents I am sorry and I didn't mean to upset them. And then while I'm explaining that they accept my apology and see this black and blue upon my skin from the clothing I would have got from the other sibling. What happens then? Then my parent now, seeing the black and blue, goes inside, gathers all the people who would possibly be responsible and gives all of them a lashing. Yeah? And I found it interesting because you were the parent who was supposed to protect me even if you were upset with me, but you decided to leave me out in the cold. And then when I get hurt, you come back and chastise all the people who hurt me while you had left me out in the cold. And it's somewhat interesting because I could understand your love for them makes you want to chastise those who would have harmed them. But it is when you withdrew from them, you didn't stop loving them, but it is when you withdrew from them that they received those hurts. And it's interesting. Now, I could only put it from that perspective. You might be able to put it from the perspective of the parent. Mm -hmm. I love you, but I have to allow you to do what is necessary, right? And then you do what is necessary. You have to face the consequences. But in the end, the consequences, if they seem too severe then, then I have to jump in again. And that is what was happening with the nation of Israel. And Joel was telling them, of course, about the day of restoration. And this is the ending of chapter 2, where we would have been looking at yesterday, all the way down to verse 28, where they, was, they were being told, I will restore you and the ultimate restoration will come on the ultimate day of the Lord. So after the restoration, Joel spoke of, like he spoke of the restoration in previous chapter. Now there will come a time of ultimate restoration and blessing. The latter time will be marked with an outpouring of God's spirit and on all flesh. So his spirit will descend upon the young men and the old, the women as well, the small children, even upon the male and female slaves. And in that day, the blessing will be so strong. Yes. That the sons and daughters will prophesy, the old men will dream dreams, the young men will have visions. Yeah? Everybody will be filled with the Spirit of God. You know? And this is now the pouring out of the Spirit on all flesh as he had promised in the old covenant. Yeah? It's interesting because when they began to walk away from God, instead of pouring out his Spirit on all flesh, only certain persons were able to do things. Joseph was filled with the Spirit of God. The craftsmen who built the tabernacle were filled with the Spirit of God. Joshua was filled with the Spirit of God. Gideon, Samson, yes, Saul, David, these were individual men. It wasn't all people. They were individual men filled with the Spirit of God that were raised up to lead his people. But here, Joel is saying, Look forward to this glorious new covenant where the Spirit of God will be poured out upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters, your old men, your young men, even your slaves. So it's almost, it reminded me almost of the day of Pentecost when the disciples were gathered in the upper room waiting and the Holy Spirit came and filled all of them. 120 followers in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 and 5, we were told, were filled with the Spirit of God and began to praise God in other tongues hmm? and it's interesting because i wanted to know whether or not we could have such a revival in our day and time a revival whereby the spirit of god could fill all of us when we look at peter Peter says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Repent and let everyone be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sin, and they shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Can you imagine if we would repent, if we would turn back to Christ and we would be filled, all of us, with his spirit? Can you imagine what that would be like and how much our life would change? All the servants of the Lord filled with his spirit in their own unique and powerful way. Each believer receiving a full measure of the spirit and using it for the glory of the kingdom of God and the good of his people. Can you imagine what a glorious and wonderful day that would probably be like? I sure can. A day where there will be much praising. A day where there will be much prophesying. A day where there will be much healing for God's people. The wonders of heaven will be visible among us if this great outpouring of God's Spirit upon us would come. And like the day of Pentecost, when they were all filled, you know, it would be a beautiful thing to behold. And look how the Lord says it. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and column of smoke. You know? The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And then everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's a beautiful thing. Because here, this is another glorious promise associated with this prophecy that Joel said will come. You know? In this time of the poured out spirit of God, salvation will no longer be a matter of association with the name of Israel. But anybody, Israel, Jews, anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's a broad call. Hmm? I mean, I often marvel and, and chuckle and say, I wish my name would be written down in the Bible. And I could say, yeah, it is. because. I am a part of this and everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am an everyone. Now it might not say a bar <laughs> it might not say Barbara, but it says everyone. I am a everyone. Hello, my name is everyone. In this time where the Lord will pour out his spirit upon the earth, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I am everyone. I am there. And it's interesting because of course, it's a call to prayer. The truth is, if you are praying, you cannot perish. No one who has ever been praying perishes. It might seem like they did, yes? Some prayed as they were being murdered. And it might seem in the eyes of the earth that their being murdered or their death is them perishing. No one who is praying can perish. Yeah? If you could perish praying, that would be a new wonder in the universe. Because then, while physically your life might be ending, your spirit gets to be with God. And that's not perishing. That is the accomplishment of a promise that God has made. Yes? Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's a wonderful thing. Open to everybody. Free for all. And it's a sign of God's great love. It's a sign that reveals who God truly is. He is impartial. He doesn't care what your denomination is. He doesn't care what your ethnicity is. He doesn't care what your gender is. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, will be saved. And it makes me think, the distinctions that exist between us are human constructs. That's it. We create the barriers that divide us. God didn't create barriers for us. He didn't say some so and some so. He didn't say that. He said, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. How then did we get to, if you are not like me, God will not hear you. If you don't worship the way I worship, if you don't wear the clothes I wear, if you don't worship on the day that I worship. No, there is no stipulation in the Bible that tells me that. All it tells me, right there in verse 32, 
that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then Joel goes on to tell us what the Lord says, yes, with regards to what will happen to those who would have brought Israel into exile. And it's a warning to the nations because it's a promise to gather back the scattered and mistreated people of Israel. When I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather the nations who would have had them in that place. And what am I going to do to them? I am going to put my judgment upon them, says the Lord. They will have to give an account of my people because they have divided my land. They have cast lots for my people, traded my boys for prostitution in their temple worship, sold my girls for wine and drunk the wine down. And what? How you plan on paying me back? Hmm? You have stolen the silver and the gold that were the riches of my treasury and of my temple. You have sold my people to the Greeks into slavery, taking them away from their own people. But now I am coming to collect them back. That was the message that Joel was prophesying coming from God. He was letting them know that God was coming back for a final gathering of the nations. Yes? And some people says it's an illusion to what would happen in Revelation. Yes? And if you look up, there is no place in Israel known as the Valley of Jehoshaphat, but we know the name Jehoshaphat means the Lord judges. And so it could be describing the Lord's judgment. Yes? But the truth is, it's a judgment of all nations. And Joel was writing at a time when the terrible plagues of locusts had been brought from God upon his people. And he's talking now about, you know what? You're going to deal harshly with us. But what about the ungodly nations that have treated us bad? We may be bad, but they are worse for how they have treated us. And God was telling Israel, don't worry about them. I got them covered too. You know? And it's almost as if though God is complaining against the nations who would have mistreated his people. And then it reminded me of the Bible verse. Touch not the Lord's anointed and do his prophet no harm. Because there's a judgment that ensures. Yeah? There's a ju judgment that comes following that. And God warns the nation that he will retaliate against those who mistreat his people. And then it makes sense. Because if everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, it means we, when we call upon the name of the Lord, becomes his people. And then he will retaliate against those who have mistreated his people. It's kind of like vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And he was telling Israel, don't worry about the nations that exist around you. Don't worry what they have done. Because I am doing a new thing where they will have to answer for their actions. And I will take care of bringing about the fairness and the justice that is supposed to be for you. And that's a beautiful promise. Two very interesting things. One, there is no separation. In the sight of God. Nothing divides us. In his kingdom. The division that exists. Are created by ourselves. For ourselves. And two. Don't worry. About retaliating against those who mistreat you. Because if you belong to God. He will make sure. That you get your retribution. That's it. God was virtually challenging the nations to come against him and his people. He was going to protect them. He was going to do to them exactly what they had done to his people. Right down to the point that he tells them in verse 8 to close off this section of the reading. I will sell your sons and daughters into the hands of the people of Judah. And then they will sell them to the Sabaeans. Hmm? And man, when you look at it, yes, it did happen. Later on, the Roman Empire will be persecuted by Christians. 
Emperor Nero will lose 30,000 of his sub subjects to pestilence. Yes? All the way down in the future. And it's interesting because it shows us that God's promises are true. The thing we need to be mindful of is if God's promises are true, remember that he doesn't just promise prosperity. He also promises judgment for wrong actions. That is the scary thing. God's word is true. It doesn't fail and it doesn't change us. His love for us is unconditional and there is nothing that separates us one from another when we choose to serve him. And when we do choose to serve him, know that the battle becomes his, whatever the battle might be. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A on page 43. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness and your servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for proper 27. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And as we celebrate and commemorate um, Remembrance Day, let us together say a prayer for those in the armed forces of our country. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the women and men of our armed forces, both at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and, and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which may beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving.
This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Linda Kerr and Miss Alyssa Castro. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Amenzi Amu, Miss Celine Arzu, Mrs. Emerita Wade, Reverend Abiyad Lozama, Miss Antoinette Cummins, and Mrs. Patricia Usher. Celebrating a birthday tomorrow is Mr. Richard Taylor, Mr. Jason Kinch, and Mr. Peter Callender. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday, and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you for all the days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Monica, Miss Margaret, Miss Betty, Miss Agnes, Miss Priscilla, and Miss Joyce. We pray for Miss Eileen, Miss Sylvia, Miss Florence, Miss Martha, Miss Helen, Miss Mona, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Pauline, Miss Des, Miss Janice, Miss Marva, Miss Loretta, Miss Alma, and Miss Derla. We remember and pray for Miss Rose, Miss Aislin, Miss Dylan, Miss Gloria, Miss Barbara, Miss Maud, and Miss Molly. We pray for Miss Grace, Miss Justine, Miss Alma, Miss Celestina, Miss Ruby, Miss Elma, and Miss Amy. We remember and pray for Miss Celine, Miss Lisa, Miss Leslie. Miss Jessica, Miss Arlet, Miss Delvorine, Miss Jean, Miss Maria, Miss Soila, Miss Crystal, Miss LaShawn, Miss Yolanda, Miss Doreen, Miss Gladys, Miss Norma, Miss Beryl, Miss Amelia, Miss Althea, Miss Janice, Miss Geraldine, Miss Ismay, Miss Mary, Miss Janet, Miss Venancia, Miss Teresa, Miss Glenda, Miss Myrtle, and Miss Elva. In our prayers, we pray as well for Miss Verolyn, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alaire, Miss Marilyn, Miss Leonor, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Nina, Miss Joan, and Miss Brenda G. We pray for Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, and Miss Sharon. We pray for Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra. Miss Bernadine, Miss Tanisha, Miss Sheila. We remember and pray for Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Ulishi, and Miss Brenda. Miss Dominic, Michelle Madin, Miss Robin, Reverend Linda, Miss Jean, and Miss Perla. In our prayers as well, we continue to remember and pray for. The following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Mr. E Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, and Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, and Mr. Ian. In our prayers, we pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerris, Mr. Walter, and Father Constancio. We remember and pray for Mr. Belhem, Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Clinton. We pray for Father Leroy, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt. Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Brindell, and Mr. Lewis. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for comfort and peace on all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We continue to remember and pray for the family of Mr. Santos Teresa Garcia. We pray for the family of Ms. Lorie Arzu. We pray for the family of Mr. Henry Garbutt the family of Miss Laverne Parham, the family of Miss Elsie Daly, and the family of Miss Margaret McBride. We remember and pray for God's comfort and peace on all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, and we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, Praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Angel, Garrett, 
Elton, Arian, Rihanna, Kai, Rhea, Ashley, and Marissa. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for our soldiers, Emil, Jason, Prince, Jade, Gavin, Charles, Barry, Sam, Keishan, and Alvin. And we especially remember all those whom we would have lost who were in the military this Remembrance Day. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the in enablement and protection of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for Drs. Molina, Arnold, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Eck, Lawrence, Joseph, Sosa, and Cuellar. We remember and pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKean, Nurse Gill, Nurse Orell, Nurse Cherie, Nurse Choislin, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Olivia, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. In our prayers, we continue to pray for those persons who work in their various areas of our medical system, both in public and private institutions. We continue in our prayers to pray for persons who would have contracted coronavirus and we pray for those who are in the various stages of isolation. We remember and pray for those who care for persons who are in isolation and we give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine. We continue to pray for a cure, the containment and the eventual elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We continue to remember and pray for persons who would have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, persons who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We remember and pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We pray for those with substance abuse issues. We pray for persons who have any form of physical or mental disability. We remember and pray for persons who might have found themselves in violence, in situations of violence or abuse of any form or kind, praying for God's protection and provision over them at this time. We continue to remember and pray for our security forces, for the government, for the churches and church leadership, for the private sector, for all non-governmental organizations who are involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian aid. We continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic. We remember and pray for those affected by the ravages of war, by the ravages of civil unrest, by the ravages of natural um, disasters. We continue to remember and pray for all those who are in the path of Lisa, as well as all those who are in the path of Nicole. We continue to remember and pray for all persons in their various circumstances. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be <coughs> we may be preserved in body and soul through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be in your presence as well as in the presence of Almighty God to greet each new day. Let me tell you, let me tell you, it's been a beautiful morning. The weather is beginning to get to the stage that I like it. It was a wonderful 72 degrees when I woke up this morning, which means it wasn't too cold and it certainly was not too hot. Mm -hmm. I want to thank those of you who joined us for Bible study yesterday, where we looked at um, week two 
of our five-week series. It would have been week three, except last week, what we did is we had a online Thanksgiving prayer session um, for those who were spared um, from Hurricane Lisa. We prayed for the well-being of persons who would have lost their property. But we had to do a Thanksgiving prayer service last week because while we would have lost property, praise God, we did not lose lives. Hallelujah. I'm still waiting for some news out of Bahamas. And let me tell you, I've been feeling some kind of way with regards to Hurricane Nicole. Because when I looked at the news internationally to see what was going on with my friends and my relatives in the Bahamas, yes, all I could find was news focusing on Florida and the storm is coming and the storm is coming. And I couldn't find news coming out of Bahamas itself. And that made me feel some kind of way. And I tried to even link with... um. ZNS, which I think is the broadcasting, one of the broadcasting companies out of the Bahamas, and I didn't get through to see what was taking place there. And it made me appreciative of Love FM and the job that they do, keeping us informed around the nation of what is taking place when we have hurricane and tropical storm watches like that. So we just continue to pray for those persons that were in the path of Lisa, that of course they would have survived this ordeal yes and we of course continue to pray for the recovery efforts both there as well as here at home and let me tell you i have seen such outpouring of human kindness here in my own town we have a group of ladies that work with the red cross that have been collecting things and they are making a second trip with a second trailer full of things from this community today to belize city and it's been such a blessing to see how people who might even feel they don't have to give found a way to give something that can be used for the good of others. That is just such a beautiful, beautiful thing to see. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Today is Friday. So following this, we have noonday prayers, evening prayer at 5.30, and then to close off the day, compline at 9 p.m. I want to pray that you have a blessed and safe Friday and indeed a blessed and safe weekend. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, thank you for your continued support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize. We're going to wrap things up this morning with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close with this one. I know we listened to it about two weeks ago, but I've been thinking about it. This one entitled, As I Went Down to the River to Pray. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. I pray you have a blessed and beautiful weekend. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same, well, no, tomorrow is Saturday. Until Monday morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and you shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show us the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about the good old way, and you shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show us the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and you 
shall wear the starry crown. Good Lord, show us the way. Oh, fathers, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, fathers, let's go down. Down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, you shall wear the robe and crown. Good Lord, show us the way. Good morning, my neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful. The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So I face a challenging day before He take me away behind to the grind. Success on my mind. Good morning, me neighbor. Good morning. The how everybody be do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray. Said thank you. Another beautiful day I had to get up and pray and say 